Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are cooking with Cashway. This is Chef Randall. My name is Mike. And, uh, you know, one of the uh, traditions of this program is that when we get done, I get to sample the food. Yes. This is one of the programs where I'm a little leery of sampling this particular okay. ingredient. Could I just settle on a piece of onion and call it good? Well, you certainly could. Yes. No. Yes. What uh, are we going to do today? So we're going to make something called, um, we're gonna, well, first of all, um, we're going to make some sushi, and we're going to make a, 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 a spicy tuna to start with. So, uh, and number we're going to do. And some people love it. Right. What a lot of people love it. And I, actually, I think you're going to find it really enjoyable. You think so? I do. Um, so one of the things is that you want to work with a really nice. Uh, so this is a, a previously frozen piece of tuna. It's no more than eight hours old. Okay. So it's caught in deep waters. It's processed and frozen very, very quickly, very cold. Uh, so that helps maintain the integrity of the fish. Um, and this is one of the products that we sell, and it's a beautiful product. It does look good. So, and this is what they call a saku block, which is an actual center cut of the loin. So think of this like uh, center cut tenderloin. This is probably the, oh. the, the, the primo of the primo right here. All right. And so what we're going to do... selling it so far. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make some small block cuts. Now, uh, if I was making a poke bowl, uh, poke means to, you know, and we've done that, I think, in the past. We've made a poke bowl. But the poke means a block cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little smaller cut than normal on, a block, on, the, on the tuna. Because we're going to make like a spicy tuna. And what we're going to do is we're going to flavor it with some different spices. And there's a lot of ways you could go with that. You know, there, you, could, you could certainly flavor it with, um, you know, sriracha or, you know, people will use all kinds of different things. Um, sometimes people use like a sriracha mayo to dip their sushi in, and that's something that you can certainly use. Um, we are going to just go a little different than that. All right, so I made strips, and now we're gonna cut that up. Okay. So every sushi stand, usually, it's, it's their own type of recipe that, that they're, they're, they're there, putting into? There are some standards, there are. Okay. Um, so typically I would make a spicy tuna out of trim. Uh, you know, like if I had a tuna steak or I had a piece of uh, like, you know, a, a sushi roll or something where, you know, I want that really nice piece of tuna and then I have this little bit of, of, of leftover, that's where I'd probably use this. Um, but, you know, we're, because we're making this on TV, uh, I think it's just best that we go this way. Your knife is wonderful. Yeah, well, I know how to yield it, too. Well, I guess you do. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're, we're, we have a bowl over ice. So very, very important that we keep this over ice. Now, I'm going to have you put in about three-quarters of that mayonnaise right there. And why why over ice? Uh, keeps the product cold. Okay. Because this is well, raw. Well, yeah, so yep. yeah. It's um, raw. Okay. All right. Enough? Yep, that's good. Okay. And then we got a little green onion that I'm cutting up here. So you can go ahead and mix that in. Okay. And give it a little salt and pepper, too, please. And what makes this spicy is this sesame oil. It's a sesame chili oil. Okay, and that, I love the smell of that. So what we want to do is we want to mix this so we get uh, a, a tacky, uh, not a, we're, not, we're, not, we're not making like chicken salad or tuna salad. We're making, you know, we want this a much tighter, tighter uh, product. So that looks really, really good. And okay. We'll, we'll, we'll bend that up there so we can, so the cus uh, our, so what we want to do is kind of just work that in there so we get a nice tacky, uh, kind of, you know, it's almost sticky, okay? I'm going to put a little lime zest in there. So do you see how I used the, the spatula to kind of almost press it? I do, but I'm also curious as to what you're doing with the lime. I would have cut it and squeezed it. So, but no. okay, so, okay, excellent question. Um, if I were to cut and squeeze the lime into this product here, I would end up cooking it. I would denature that protein. Oh. It would actually pickle. Oh. So I don't want to pickle it. I just want the flavor of lime but not, not the juice of the lime. Very good. So zest is the best way to go with that one. Okay. Okay, so now that we got that, we're, we're ready. And this is all over ice, so we don't have to go anywhere. It's, it's just, it's very good. Now, in the meantime, we made something called an unagi sauce, which is a Japanese um, barbecue sauce, okay? okay? Um, but it's, it's basically a mirin, rice wine vinegar, a little bit of soy sauce and sugar. And it's just taken down to the consistency of a 
a warm um, maple syrup, should I say. Oh. Okay, because when you pull it off, it's going to tighten up. Then we also went ahead and made some sushi rice. So okay. we got that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in on a break. We're going to come back, and then we're going to start building our little sushi balls. Okay. Okay. Don't go away. I'm going to uh, try something that I haven't tried ever. You're going to so. like it. You're going to like it. Stick around for that. <laughs>